All right, guys, this is another one, uh, one of those one take, no edits, just my thoughts as a Nets fan. Kevin Durant just got traded to the Phoenix Suns, and this happened at 1.15 in the morning um, a couple hours ago. I was about to go to sleep, and then I got the notification from Woj, and I, I just disbelief, just complete disbelief and i was just speechless i was like, gonna record this last night but it was so late i was like you know i'm just gonna sleep on it get my thoughts in the morning uh but follow me on twitter uh link is in the description because that's where i'm posting a ton of opinions and stuff like that so follow me on there but man um the kd Kyrie era in brooklyn is officially over um uh the nets if you didn't know the nets got Macau bridges cam johnson jay crowder Four unprotected first round picks in 2023, 25, 27, and 29, and a 2028 pick swap as well for Kevin Durant. And we also sent TJ Warren to the desert. So, um, we'll talk about it from the Suns' perspective and then from the Nets' perspective. From the Suns, unbelievable trade, obviously. You get Kevin Durant, the guy that you guys wanted last offseason, you finally were able to get him this offseason or this during the season. Now they are clearly the favorites to win the West, I think. Uh, KD, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton, Devin Booker. That's a stacked team. But for the Nets, man, um, it just felt like this was a little bit inevitable. As a Nets fan, you know, we had so many bad years in the early 2010s when we first moved to Brooklyn. And then the year with D'Lo and Lavert and Allen, that team that made the playoffs, that was just a fun team to watch. Yeah, they got first rounded, but you felt like something was being built. Then that summer, KD and Kyrie come, and you're like, all right, this is where we go win a championship. First year, they were both hurt, so it's like, all right, that doesn't count. Year two, you know, it just it just ended up with us getting Harden and COVID and everything. And then Harden gets hurt in the playoffs. Kyrie gets hurt in the playoffs. KD has the best game, one of the best game seven performances of all time, but his foot's on the line, doesn't count. All in all, everything that kind of happened to the Nets over the span of the past four years or three and a half years just kind of felt like it was inevitable that nothing was ever, we were never going to win a championship with this roster. And it's just sad to believe that because of how talented Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are. But just the, the, we, the, the stars never aligned in our favor. You know, we were never at full strength. Everyone was always in and out of the lineup. Even this, look at the Nets this year. A month ago, people were like, oh my God, this team it has a chance to win the championship we were 18 and 2 in our last 20 games the best span in franchise record we were like two games out of first place in the east kd goes down shit hits the fan and it's just like i don't even know it's just so crazy that it's over and how quickly it happened did we get a good return for kd i don't know we definitely could have gotten a better return for him in the off season but at the same time it came out that the nets and kd were working together to get him to get a deal done and honestly i'm happy for kd I have no hard feelings toward KD the way that I did towards Kai. Um, Kevin Durant was a pro's pro. He always came out. He always balled. He was great with the media. He, he He's Kevin Durant. You got to appreciate KD. He just wants to hoop. And I respect him for coming back this year, rescinding his trade request in the offseason. I respect him for giving it a go under the new coaching staff and everything. But I understand his decision. I understand the next decision to just move on. And get going with a new era. So what does this new era in Brooklyn look like? I don't know. We have a lot of wings, a lot of 3 and D guys. I like Mikal Bridges a lot. I think he's going to be really good for the team. Obviously, Spencer Dinwiddie, Finney Smith are good. But it's like, now you wonder, could the Nets have taken a different deal for, for Kyrie, which would have got us some more picks, like the Russell Westbrook deal would have got us Westbrook and then two first-rounders. Uh, is that more valuable than what we got as far as a rebuilding phase goes? I don't know. Maybe. Um, I, I don't know. There was reports that the Nets were going to shop at, around Jim, uh, Jay Crowder before the, the deadline. The deadline's literally in a couple of hours, like literally five hours or something like that from right when I'm recording this. So, like, the Nets are probably not done. We'll see exactly what happens. But now we do have a lot of draft capital. Um, we got some pieces. Would not be surprised if Ben Simmons has moved. Um I don't know. I, supposedly, he doesn't really have much trade value across the league right now. So who he'll be traded for or who would give us anything for Ben is kind of up in the air. But I don't know. This new lineup, um, you know, look, 
the franchise is in the hands of Cam Thomas and Nick Claxton. And honestly, I, I guess I'm okay with it. You know, Nick has been unbelievable this year. Maybe defensive player of the year. Cam Thomas, three straight games, dropping 40 plus points. Dude's just a certified bucket. So I love Cam. I'm glad that we still have both those players on the team. And ultimately, I think the Nets front office just decided, you know what? Katie's probably going to leave in the summer. They probably look to try to get Siakam or Levine or DeRozan or somebody like that uh, this year to pair with KD to try to make one last push for the championship. Once they realized that wasn't going to happen, the teams weren't going to give them what they wanted. They decided, you know what, we might as well get the rebuild going now. And as sad as it is for me to say as a diehard Nets fan my whole life, I understand where they're coming from. I still think that this is the biggest disappointment uh, maybe ever for the NBA. I mean, this front office literally just, like, fumbled Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, James Harden. Like, you can't make that up. Like, this is these are, like, all-star, superstar-level basketball players that were all on the same team. They all asked out within one calendar year. That is crazy. So, definitely not too happy with Marks and with Josai um, as far as... There we go. Sorry, the lighting was off. As far as um, how this era in Brooklyn turned out, but... I'm optimistic for the future. I'm excited to see where the Nets go from here because, like I said, we still have a solid roster. Like, this roster could probably get us, like, a play-in bid. You know what I mean? So, it's like, I don't know if it's, like, we're going to... And we also, we're not, not going to tank because we don't have our own picks. Like, we all we have all Phoenix picks and Dallas picks, and then we have a Philly and a Houston pick, too, or something like that. So, we don't even have our own picks, so tanking wouldn't even make any sense. So, I'm very curious to see where the Nets go from here. Um, but... Yeah, losing Kevin Durant really hurts. It really hurts more than losing Kai, I think, because KD's KD. He's arguably the best player on the planet. You didn't expect, no Nat fan expected this era in Brooklyn to end like this. But with that being said, it happened. I guess it's time to move on. And it's just a sad day for Nets fans. It's, it's, it's it genuinely just sad. I'm speechless. I'm kind of talking in circles. I don't really know what to say anymore. But that's my reaction. It's always Nets world, uh, you know, I'll never stop being a Nets fan no matter what happens. They're thick and thin, and here's to a better next era in Brooklyn.